Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're all having a great day. Uh, and then this update, it's a Vinny update. So I uh, need to get some work done on Vinny. I've just realized actually, so um, from the start of this month, so start of May, uh, I've just reinsured it. I've just had a look, the MOT's run out, run out at the end of April, so I need to get it MOT'd. Um, and yeah, I need to tax it as well for London to Brighton. So I want to use it a little bit more because it hasn't been out for ages now. Uh, and I just don't get much use out of it. So there are a couple of little jobs that have been uh, in the background waiting for me to do and get done. So I'm gonna knock off a couple of those jobs now. So the first of those jobs is the oil pan gasket for the gearbox or sump gasket, whatever you wanna call it. Most of those Americans call it an oil pan gasket. I'd say it's a sump gasket. It's a sump gasket for the gearbox, for the manual transmission. Uh, and it's just leaking. I think, to be honest, it's self-inflicted. So I have had to jack it up before, and because Vinny doesn't have a conventional subframe in the back, it can be quite hard to jack, and I've jacked on that oil pan before. I know what you're gonna say, you shouldn't do that, and uh, I think that's caused it to leak a little bit. When I say leak, it's like, you know, I drive it for 50 miles and there'll be one drip on there put it in the workshop, one drip on the floor. Well, one drip is too many for me. So, um, done a bit of this off camera. So that's the sort of sump for the gearbox there. That goes over the differential crown wheel. Um, and so I've just taken that off, cleaned it up and painted it. Sorry about the noise. And I've got a gearbox gasket set as well. So we're only gonna be using one of these gaskets. That'd be the gasket for the sump when I can get into it. So that's this gasket here. So I'm gonna do that. I have got some fresh oil to go in there. So it's some multi-grade oil in Vinny. It's nothing special. Sorry, the, the container looks a bit old and decrepit. That's just because it's been, when I lived at the old house, I lacked room in the garage, so I just stuck it outside beyond the barbecue. Uh, but it's fresh oil, EP80W90, which is a correct grade for it. Uh, and it takes about 2.1 litres, 2.2 litres. So we'll put fresh gear oil in it, um, new gasket, new um, cleaned up the sump. So that should sort that little oil leak out there and it gives the gearbox an oil change as well. So I've done it when I originally built Vinny, but you know, gearbox oil gets overlooked. I know it lasts a long, long time, but if you get the opportunity to touch to change it, it's not very expensive. There's only a couple of liters in there. Uh, it's worth changing. Uh, and we're also gonna do the oil and filter on it while we're there. So Vinny has done, I was looking the other day actually, the engine conversion I've done five years ago. So it's lasted the test of time that has. I picked up some bad comments on videos when I built it, people saying, you know, it's not gonna last and that sort of thing. Well, five years down the line, it's still going strong. Um, that's because it was built well, if I say so myself. Um, but in that time, it's probably had about, it's done 5,000 miles roughly, and it's probably had about five or six oil changes. So I'm gonna do another one now. So I've got a genuine oil filter for it. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, just Halford's 1540 part synthetic. Um, I don't want to get into a debate on oils, but I change the oil in Vinny and the same in PL very regularly. They, you know, I'd say the most they'll ever go without an oil change is 3,000 miles. And in Vinny, it's, it's having an oil change every probably 1,500 miles. It is just a waste of money spending that on really expensive, fully synthetic oil. Because if you're going to run it for the full uh, service schedule. So if it's sort of 12,000, 18, 20,000 mile between services, it is definitely worth buying top quality branded oil. If you run a modern car that has like 20,000 miles between service schedules, buy the right oil, buy decent quality oil as well, because it needs uh, all the detergents and everything that's in that oil to make it last that long distance between servicing. If you're dumping the oil out every thousand, three thousand miles, um, 
make sure you get the right grade that is really really important but apart from that you know the the difference between a cheap oil and a really expensive oil will be the additives they put in it and those additives are there to prolong the life of the oil so if you're going to run it to the full uh, distance between the services then yeah spend the money on the oil if you're going to dump the oil out after a thousand fifteen hundred three thousand miles just get the right grade there's really no point in spending a load of money on oil so that's my justification behind buying Halfords oil uh, never had any problem with it like I say just make sure it's the correct grade of oil you're using uh, and then finally uh, just some red hammerite and I'll show you we'll have a look at Vinnie in the moment uh, it's got obviously it's all customized at the front it's an all speed subframe subframe frames painted red um, and it's just got a few chips. It's a bit messy under the front of any at the moment. I don't usually get it like that, but it spent most of last year outside uh, under a cover because uh, obviously we, before we moved house, so it's picked up a bit of rust at the front there. So I need to get it, that all cleaned up before the show season. So, my God, I've waffled on a bit, haven't I? So let's get cracking. So, uh, welcome to the dark side. And by dark side, I mean this is the dark side of the workshop. Really need to get the lighting sorted out, but it's absolutely naff where Vinny is. So I've got loads of extra lights over under here. Probably doesn't look that bad on the camera. Uh, but here is the bottom of the gearbox, and this is where that uh, new sump and sump gasket goes. Uh, this is a crown wheel for the differential. It's quite big when you compare it with one for like a mini. Uh, that's just because it obviously it's designed to carry more power and there's more space underneath uh, Vox Lastra which is what this engine come out of uh, and then I just need to give it all a good clean up really so there's a bit of weepage around here where the oil's been a uh, bit on the back here I need to do the CV inner and outer CV joints they've just got plastic cable clips on at the moment uh, they just leak you only do 40 50 miles an hour they don't drip out any more oil but when you're doing 100 miles an hour uh they must just expand and you get a bit of grease coming out i uh, just need to give it a general bit of a tidy up so there's just some marks on the subframe just where it's been jacked up and that sort of thing so keep watching and let's get it done
right, so the oil is just on the max with the engine. Um, so we want to just start it up now, make sure the oil warning light goes out, and then recheck the oil level once it's once the oil warning light's gone out, it's run through the filter, so we'll we'll have filled the filter up with oil. So on Vinny, uh, oil pressure light is exactly the same as it is on any other Mini. It's in neutral. Bit of a squealy fan belt because it hasn't started up for a while, but uh, you'd have seen the oil light go out. Once that oil light's gone out, now we can recheck the engine oil. Right, so that oil should be on the maximum now. No higher than that. So we're just a th probably a third of the way between minimum and maximum. Uh, Vinny is up on the ramps at the moment, so it's not quite level. So we'll add a little bit of oil. I think we'll get it to about halfway. That'll do. And then I'll recheck it again when it's on the flat. So really important that. Don't check your oil while it's on not on the level. So we're about halfway between minimum and maximum now. I'm happy with that until it's back on the level and we can recheck it. And now I just need to top up the gearbox, which is a bit of a pain to do on this. So I'll show you what I mean. So to top up the gearbox on Vinny, we need to get the oil through this breather here. So there's a breather on top of the gearbox with a little cap on it. get it off at the moment might have to grab a screwdriver but you've got to pump the oil in through there right so i've had a look and vinnie holds 1.6 liters of oil that's all so it's not much in the gear oil and you have to fill it up through this breather here luckily though it unscrews and that's just like a restrictor to stop it pouring out oil so it's got a very small hole in the end uh, and then you can use uh, a pipe or something funnel. I use an oil. Generally a gearbox oil comes in a little can with a pipe on it and that allows you to pour it in or get it into the gearbox. So we're going to do that. And do excuse me, I probably won't show you this because it's really hard to show on the camera because there ain't much room around there. That's an empty can. So I'll decant uh, 1.6 litres into this or one litre at a time anyway. And then this basically, when you pull it up, it has a filler tube for a gearbox on it, so it just makes it a lot easier. Right, can't remember for the life of me, last bit of filmed, but anyway, little package in the post today, and we've got some metal CV boot clips. I think, like I might have already said, Vinny's got cable ties on it at the moment, plastic cable ties. What I find is they are absolutely fine. They work, work a treat until I go and do a track day or a day at Santa Pod or something like that. And it must just be the speed because it spews out CV grease um, at high speed. When I say high speed, you know, 100 miles an hour sort of thing. Below that, it's all right. But uh, we're going to put some metal clips on it anyway. They're a bit more robust and they'll hold the CV boot tighter. And this... I can't remember what videos I've done, but that's kind of for a secret project. Tell you more soon. So this is just looking at underneath Vinny and I've just tidied it up a bit. So I've just resprayed these 
rails for the subframe just because they I've jacked up on it a few times it's chipped the paint um, uh, I painted the bottom of the sump again so uh, yeah we're pretty much done I just need to do these CV boot clips which I won't film it's a bit boring isn't it but I'll get that done and then we need to give it a wash and it's MOT day tomorrow right guys that's it for this week so that's Vinny ready for its MOT tomorrow don't know whether it'll pass it should do I've given it the once over just had a check uh, I've done those CV boot clips replacing with metal ones uh, and I just checked all the steering suspension on the front end it's all tight but what I was really disappointed to see was the rubber boots for the track rod ends on both sides uh, really badly cracked they're not split yet but they're within a hair's width of splitting so they might split by the time I get down there what's really annoying is I've owned Vinny for nearly seven years this year I think seven years this year so six years six and a half years ago uh, it had split boots on the track rod ends so I bought two new track rod ends um, about two years after that they split and I replaced them again so originally I bought them from a show and then after that I think I bought them from mini sport so two years after that they split again and I replaced them with track rod ends from mini spares and yeah looking again now which is roughly two years three years after that they need doing again so they're not worn out the rubber just perishes on them which is absolutely rubbish I've only done about 6,000 miles in total in Vinny in sort of six and a half nearly seven years so it's ridiculous I'm on my third set of track ends. so thanks for watching this week guys um, tune in again soon and see you later